oh hi, you know, this is what God looks like, or at the very least it's what Western artists have portrayed him to look like over the last few centuries. This is how I prefer him to look like. At least she gives me things. So do we still need God, a moral patriarch that looks over us and makes us hopefully do things for good? Well, I do want to answer that. I have a wicked analogy about celery coming up. But first, I need to explain myself. Here's the thing. I came out as an atheist a long time ago, and this was after many years of researching and thinking and truly discovering my place in the world. The world, by the way, responded by giving me two and a half stars on Yelp. To ask such a provocative question, it might seem like I'm trying to goad another group of people or try and be a troll of some kind, but as we can all see, my years of being a troll are over, I just don't have the hair for it. I have many friends who are religious, mostly in Christianity. My really good friend, probably my best friend, is actually a pastor, so I'm all sorts of complex. He said pretentiously. One of those Christian friends is a guy named Daniel, who you may have seen in previous videos. Me and him do a podcast called Assumptions, where two different worldviews come together and show that different perspectives can still be friendly. And because we recently recorded with each other, this question about whether we need a God has been just rattling around in my brain skull. And it's not something that I can easily answer in a single sentence. I mean, when I'm confronted with a hardship, I don't look to a supernatural being for answers. I don't pray, and I don't use Christian values to inform my decisions. But for others, there's a handy framework that's given to them. I mean, it's even written down in a really handy book. To be fair, though, it really drags in the middle. Though the ending is a revelation. For myself and others who find ourselves in this secular age, we use other resources, technology, family, friends, mentors, to inform our decisions. And that's not to say that Christians or other religions don't have those things as well. It's just that their strong faith is the buttress to those other elements. And even though I am this dirty secularist, I can see how much religion is ingrained in so many people. We want that moral authority. We want that strong leader. God has provided that for centuries. He has bestowed that down to the pastors, the ministers, and the popes of humanity. For myself and other non-religious people, we look to corporate bosses, media luminaries, YouTube stars, presidents, political activists, and for a brief moment, pizza rat. We look to those strong figures because at a certain level, we kind of just want to be told what to do, what to champion, what to vilify, what to believe in. But there is a harm in that. Beliefs are fine, but when those beliefs are corrupted into demagoguery or fanaticism, that's when bad things happen. So here's the celery example. Let's say that at a very young age, you were taught that celery was harmful to humans, that it stunted growth and reduced brain cells. That in and of itself, as you grew older and started to say the same thing, is bad. We know that that isn't true and it's causing undue panic throughout the populace. Beliefs can and should change with new evidence. It just very rarely happens with humans. You can see that with the vaccine debate that continues to rage on. You can see that with Canadian liberals and their continued devotion to Justin Trudeau, even though he's broken many campaign promises. And you can see that with American Republicans who continue to support a guy who just really wants to date teenage girls. So this silly celery example that I just made up is all fine and good, but I can prove that celery is good, if not very bland for you. That same idea is much harder when it's a person who believes that God created Earth in his image and sees humans as his children. How would you effectively debate that with another person who believes that there's a whole pantheon of gods and they all live up on a very tall mountain? The only thing that you can do is respect their beliefs. That is, as long as they're not forcing you to change your own morality or physically and or emotionally hurting you or others. Even though I do think it is equivalent to people saying that celery is bad for you, I know that their faith is strong and I'm not gonna be able to change their minds. I feel like I've lost the metaphor again. Do we need God? No, I don't think that we do. But I do recognize that we love God-like figures to guide our culture. But we need to be cautious because they aren't God. All too often we've found out recently that they are simply human, or worse, 
comedians. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kyle. I upload videos every Monday and Thursday. You can check out that podcast called Assumptions by clicking on the link in the description of this video. You can also help support videos just like this by going and being a supporter on my Patreon page. <sighs> this is a long video. I really pray that doesn't happen again.